Hi everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood science teacher and welcome back to another lightning lesson. Today we're going to be talking about different types of animal behavior. Just like in all of our videos so far, we have some categories to break down different types of behavior into, which we'll be going over. And then at the end of the video, hopefully we'll see some photos and videos that I've collected over the last couple weeks to show you. The first couple of categories we're going to talk about are instincts versus learned behavior. Instincts are behavior that an animal is born knowing. They don't have to be taught that behavior, it's something that they just do on their own. The opposite of that would be learned behavior. If an animal is exhibiting a learned behavior, that is a behavior that they had to be taught or they had to learn from observing their environment and solving problems in order to repeat that behavior. To give you an example of what these look like, we're going to talk about the game dodgeball. Most of you have played dodgeball in gym class. If someone is throwing a dodgeball at you, your instinct is to step out of the way of the dodgeball. That's not really something that someone had to tell you. That's just what your brain does automatically in order to get you out of the way. So your instinct is to step away from the ball so that you don't get hit. However, when most people play dodgeball, you know that if you catch the dodgeball, you get the person who threw it out. So a learned behavior would be stepping in the way of the ball and catching it in order to get the other person out. That's not something that your brain would do by itself automatically because it kind of goes against your instinct, but that would be a behavior that you learn from learning the rules of the game or from observing other people playing the game to see how that would get somebody on the other team out. Let's now move on to an example from the animal kingdom for those two things. Most of you have played with a dog before and you know that when a dog is happy, it wags its tail. That is an instinct. When a dog is a puppy, it's parents or you don't have to teach the dog to wag its tail to show that it's happy. That's something that it does by instinct. It does it by itself. However, a lot of people train their dogs to scratch at the door when they need to go out or they train their dog to do tricks. That's learned behavior and a lot of times the dog associates the behavior with getting a treat or getting to do something. So they have learned that behavior over time because they know that doing that behavior or that thing gets them a reward. So that would be a learned behavior. Our next set of animal behaviors are cooperative behavior and competitive behavior. Cooperative behavior is when animals work together to achieve a goal that they can all benefit from. In the animal kingdom, we usually see this in animals that live in packs or in herds. Usually the group of animals together will work together to share resources or to defend territory or find shelter so that the entire group can benefit. If you've ever um, looked at a pack of lions on a documentary or a pack of wolves, those groups of animals work together to share food and to make sure that the whole group is safe. The opposite of that would be competitive behavior. Competitive behavior is when animals fight for resources and don't share. The benefit of this for those animals is that if they get the resource, they have enough for themselves and they don't have to worry about splitting it with other animals but if they can't get to it in time, then they don't get that resource. We see this in animals that hunt or gather resources on their own where they don't have a group to share with. Let's take a look at those two behaviors and how they would impact something that we all know and love, group projects. If your group project group is exhibiting collaborative behavior or cooperative behavior, that means that your whole group is working together to achieve the goal of getting a good grade on your group project. This can mean that you and your group members all do all the parts of the project together, or it can mean that you split up the work so that everybody has a different piece to do so that you combine it at the end. You guys are working together to achieve a shared goal with whichever route you take to do that. The downside of this is if one person in your group does not engage in the cooperative behavior, that can bring down your overall grade. So it really does depend on all people doing what they're supposed to do in that group. Competitive behavior in that same scenario might look like if one person was the only person who could achieve points in that group project. Obviously this is not how group projects actually work, but we're going to use it as an example to explain it. So let's say you're in a group for this project, but only one of you can get the top grade. So then the competitive behavior would be you trying to score better than your group mates so that you get the top points in that project. Obviously we don't do this for normal grades because it doesn't work for that reason, if we're doing group projects, the more logical choice is to use collaborative or cooperative behavior versus competitive behavior. The last category of animal behavior that we're going to talk about today is how 
parent organisms care for their offspring. This varies wildly within the animal kingdom as far as how much parental care organisms get. There are some organisms that don't stay with their offspring after they're born. Some of them don't even wait for the eggs to hatch if they lay eggs. They just lay the eggs and leave and the offspring are responsible for growing up and caring for themselves once they hatch. But then on the other side of the spectrum, there are some organisms that stay with their parents for years, even joining a pack or a group as they get older and staying with their family unit forever. Um, depending on the animal, they're or even depending on the group of animals, if we're just looking at birds, the amount of time that um, parent organisms within the bird family stay with their hatched eggs varies wildly from species to species. The reason why we included this category at the end of the video is because over the last couple weeks I tried to get more nature walk footage for you guys to show you some of these animal groups in the wild. However, a lot of the animals that I have seen over the past couple weeks um, did not come out the day that I had the video camera with me. So I do have that video footage for you, but I'll also be inserting some pictures to show some of the animals that I have seen nearby, as well as some facts about how long they stay with their offspring after they're born, and any other examples of cooperative and competitive behavior that we see, or instincts versus learned behavior. I hope that this helped you go over some of the vocab words for this section of animal behavior, and I hope you enjoy the nature walk footage and photos. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood science teacher. We're going to be going on another nature walk today to talk some more about animals. I've seen some really cool animals around lately, I think because there's maybe less traffic noises, there are more coming out. Um, but hopefully we'll see some exciting new animals today that I can show you and give you a little bit more information about. Alright you guys, right there is an adult robin. Birds actually have a pretty wide variety in how long they take care of their babies, so I will insert information about how long baby robins stay in the nest so that you can see it. But I've been seeing a lot of robins out and about lately. Um, they seem to usually be in groups or kind of travel together. Um, but right now there's just that one hopping around on the ground, maybe looking for some materials to build a nest. Lately I've also seen a lot of people fishing along this river, just kind of to get some sunshine and some time outside. Um, fish usually, especially in rivers like this, do not care for their babies, so it's not like Finding Nemo. A lot of fish will lay their eggs and then leave and either go downstream or somewhere else, and when the eggs hatch, the fish usually kind of take care of themselves, start looking for food, and grow and develop independent of their parents. Ooh, we have a lovely freight train making some great noises in the background of the video. We've also got some ducks hanging out on the river. I think this might be the same pair of ducks that I've been seeing all week because they're always about in the same spot. Um, ducks are not one of the things that I looked up before doing the video, so I'll insert information about how long ducks care for their babies. But like we said before, birds actually have a pretty wide variety of how long their babies stay with them. So right in the viewfinder right now, we've got our male duck that has the bright green head. And... Oh, the other one disappeared somewhere, but the other one that's more just grays and browns would have been the female duck. So they might be guarding a nest somewhere or preparing to build one. All right, we've got an even closer shot of our ducks. There's gonna be some branches in the way, but they were diving down to get some food off the bottom of the river. So this must be a really good feeding ground for them. Alright, right around this dry grassy area up ahead is where recently I've been seeing a lot of plains garter snakes. I'll insert a picture of them that I took a couple days ago, but usually when I've been walking out here I've seen like five or six at a time even when I'm being really loud and talking on the phone. Um, so hopefully if we move really quietly we might see some today. I'm going to try to walk as carefully as I can so that it, the camera doesn't give you guys a headache. Um, but the reason why we've been seeing so many so so many lately is because 
they usually come out between April and October. That's the season where they are the most active. Um, and because snakes are reptiles, they usually don't um, hang around to raise their offspring. They usually lay the eggs and then just leave them and go off to do other things. And the baby snakes usually emerge from their shells almost um, pretty close to what their adult state would look like. So they don't really need their parents to watch over them as they grow up. They're pretty self-sufficient right away. Hopefully we'll see some. If not, there's another spot later down the trail where I tend to see them as well. So if we don't see them here, we might get lucky on the other side of the river. Found this spot in here on the other side of all those branches where those blackbirds were, and they're all still flying around. But I just heard so many different bird calls just standing in here. There's even more like up there. There's something really loud that's making like a cawing noise. I also just saw a couple squirrels running around. So maybe we'll see a squirrel. Um, squirrels, since they are mammals, they care for their young slightly longer than birds do. But squirrels actually also don't um, care for their babies for very long compared to some mammals. So I'll insert some information about those as well as well as a picture since now I can't find the squirrel. But this area seems to have a lot of bird activity. I don't know if it's because it's kind of secluded, but they can still fly around. But there's a lot in here right by the river, which is pretty cool. And a bunch of different varieties too. There's some more birds hanging out in the grass over there. I'm standing pretty far away and looking at them through uh, my camera zoomed in really close, but there's a bunch of them just kind of sitting on the grass, probably looking for worms and other little insects to eat. It's kind of cool. There's so many of them out there. I'm not even picking up half of them. All right, we are now crossing the river. So hopefully we see some different animals on the other side. There's a lot of trains today for some reason. Um, but on the other side, there's usually a patch where I can see some more of those little snakes and other spots with lots of birds and things. So hopefully we'll see some other stuff. There goes the squirrel up the branch. Finally got one on camera so I can insert some of the facts that I looked up about them. But usually around here we get gray squirrels. Oh, there he goes. We can also get um, fox squirrels or black squirrels, but the black squirrels are actually just a genetic variation in those gray squirrels. So I'll insert some information about them. I have seen a lot of them so far today, but they're really, really hard to catch on camera, so I'm glad that we got one. 